bagels. They're so damn scrummy with any kind of combination of different flavors. Oh my goodness me, they, they're just so good. But you know when you go to the shop and then you come home, you open the packet, you cut it in half, you toast it, and then you take that first bite and then it's, oh. And that enjoyment that you were looking forward to has just been swept away from you. Now, proper fresh bagels are actually really easy and very simple to make in your own home, so you don't need to go buy them. And I'm gonna show you now and convince you, trust me, you can make top quality bagels. Check this out. Yes, and we're going to be showing you that everyday seasoning to go on top of them from the boiling to the baking and even pairing them up with some delightful flavors like, oh yeah, the bacon. And also, if you're new here and I've kind of intrigued you, feel free to hit that subscribe button and also feel free to hit the bell notification to let you know when these videos are out. So sit back and we're going to show you how to make those delightful little devils. So the first thing we want to do is make the bagel dough. So we're actually going to be making a starter for this called a U-cone, which is pretty much the same thing as a tangzong paste for the breads and brioches. So this is specifically for the bagels itself. So it's going to add a nice softness to it, help with the chewiness, and also keep it fresher for longer, which I don't think we're going to need that in this household. So all we're going to need is 90 ml of water or six tablespoons. And then we want 30 grams of flour, which is about a quarter of a cup and that's plain flour or all-purpose flour, whichever you want to call it. And then we're going to take this over to the stove. And then you want to put it onto a medium heat, giving it a continuous stir until it's nice and pasty. And you thought I was going to do some pasty puns. So once it's all nice and pasty, pop it into a ramekin dish or a suitable container, whichever you can find. So next you want to sieve out 500 grams of bread flour or strong flour, which is about four cups. Also, we're going to need 10 grams of salt so next you need to weigh out the water for the yeast and it needs to be about 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit as that will be the optimal temperature for the yeast to proof. So you're gonna need 280 ml, which is one cup and one fifth of a cup. In addition, you want three teaspoons of dry active yeast. And then you wanna give it some food, which is gonna be 15 grams of sugar, which is one and a quarter tablespoons. And then give that a mix until that's all dissolved down. So next you wanna grab Wait, wait. Oof. That was a close one. So next you want to grab your KitchenAid, or you can do this by hand, whichever you prefer. And then you want to grab yourself Captain Hook, attach that to the KitchenAid. Then you want to carefully add the flour without it falling all over your work surface with that delightful Yukon paste. Wait. I'm a messy sod sometimes. And then place this onto a low speed to incorporate the flour into the Yukon paste. Almost keep saying Tang Zong, but it's Yukon. Yukon? Yukon? Pronunciations are terrible. So once that's incorporated, add your beautiful yeasty mix. And let that knead for about five minutes until smooth, whacking up the speed just a little smidge. Don't go too wild. I went too wild, I made more mess again. So once the dough is nice and smooth, it will be a little smidge tacky. So carefully take it out of the bowl, pop that bad boy in the wash, and then just lightly dust with a small amount of flour, folding it up into a nice little ball, and then just gently pull it all together, cradling it in your hands. And then once nice and smooth, you wanna carefully plop them into the bowl, plop, and then just lightly dust with flour, and then cling with cling film, allowing it to proof somewhere warm until it's doubled in size, which should take about two hours. And while we're waiting, we can make that everyday seasoning. Because you know, it's not every day that you make this, right? Just don't, I, I know, I know. And I'm pretty sure it's everything seasoning, not every day donut. So we're gonna need three tablespoons of poppy seeds, two tablespoons of sesame seeds, two tablespoons of black sesame seeds, one tablespoon of onion powder, and then one tea... Oh, it kind of helps you if you open the lid. And then one teaspoon of garlic powder. And then give that a little mix, 
and then set it aside for later on. So that little devil, well it's not really little devil anymore, is doubled in size. So this is good to go, so we're going to knock it back next. So once you get it out of the bowl, eventually. So carefully knock it back or, well, just get right to it. So you should get about 10 to 12 pieces out of this roughly. So you want to cut these up nice and evenly. And you're pretty much looking for roughly about 80 grams per portion, give or take. So around 80 grams will get you 10 pieces and plus a little tiny bagel as well. And what you want to do is using the thumbs and the palms of your hand is to give them a little bit of a swirl, using your thumbs to tuck in those doughs. And you should have a beautiful, smooth, plump dough. So once the dough balls are rolled up, grab yourself a nice clean tray with a silk mat or parchment paper. You're going to need two of these trays. Lightly dust the tray with flour without getting it everywhere. And then grab in one of the dough balls using your thumb and I find middle finger, you can use your index finger, whichever you prefer. Pop a hole straight through the middle. And once you're through, grab both of your index fingers and then start spinning it. Not pulling too hard, just to make a nice, beautiful hole in the middle for our donuts, bagels. And you want to stretch these big enough, make a nice large hole because they will kind of like pull back a little bit. And also when they start to prove when they're doubled in size, that hole will actually close up a little bit. So you want to make sure you've got a big enough hole in the middle of your bagel. So repeat the process for the rest of these dough balls. So you want to put a tray over the top of these bagels to let them proof, but because my kitchen's so hot today, these are proven very, very fast. So you want to make sure you prove them probably just under double the size. And that's what we're kind of looking for as they're going to enlarge and when we drop them into the water. So grab yourself a large pan and fill this about three quarters of the way up with water, put it on to boil, and then I'm going to show you what to do next. Also, in addition, you want to preheat that oven to 160 Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit. So now many people put different things into the boiling water so obviously this is not quite boiling yet but we're going to be adding it very shortly i'm going to be going for today two tablespoons of baking powder and about a teaspoon of honey to give it that kind of caramelization some people like to use malt syrup whichever easiest for you or whichever you prefer go for it so once those delightful bagels have doubled in size your water's boiling careful when you add the bacon soda or actually bacon powder shall we say careful it doesn't boil over and we're going to carefully drop the bagels in, cooking for about one minute each side. And once they're done, just tip them over and cook them on the other side for another further minute. And get yourself ready a cooling rack as well so we can drain off the excess liquid. So once these have drained off and um, yeah, you, you kind of want to put a tray underneath to catch the mess, right? Carefully pop these onto a clean tray. And then grabbing some egg wash, give these a nice little brush all the way around. And then using that everything seasoning just to go over the top nice and evenly. And once these are ready, these are going straight in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes till golden and delicious. So here is the first tray. The second tray is almost done. It's about to come out, but look at those. Doesn't get any better than this. And the smell in here, oh my goodness me. It's a world of its own. It really is. So once the other ones come out, we're going to put them onto a cooling rack to cool down. And uh, we're just going to let these uh, holy rings of uh, deliciousness, shall we say. And there it is. There is our delightful everything bagels. And uh, they turned out an absolute treat. And that's all we got time for today. Did you really think I was going to finish up without trying or even filling these little bad boys? I don't think so. So let's cut open the first one. Oh my goodness me, look at that. Beautiful bubbles, a nice little chewy, the softness to it. Oh my goodness me. That is a absolute little treat. And they've all still stayed on. Happy days. Now you might be inclined to toast this, but I feel like just warm out of the oven, you really don't need to. It's just so delicious on its own right here. But if you want to toast it, that option's right there for you. So for this first one, on goes that beautiful cream cheese. 
and then some delightful wild socket eye salmon and then just a few little delightful pickle capers and there is our first bagel as for the second one cream cheese again and as it's a bacon channel i couldn't resist this and i'm pretty sure you'll be very pleased with the results that beautiful crispy oh yes bacon And then just a little smidge of lettuce over the top. And I bet you're thinking, I know what's coming next, tomato. Um, it would have been, but I haven't got any tomatoes in the fridge. So yeah, and there we go, folks. There is our delightful bagels there. Goodness me, so the cream cheese on both uh, with the smoked salmon and the capers. And then we got the smoked crispy bacon. Oh, sorry, bacon the lettuce and obviously wish I had tomato but it's okay and obviously the cream cheese on there so I think we need to have a little taster and see what these are like I say a small little slice but um you know we, we, we're going full in especially on that bacon so uh, let's let's give it a go Oh, these are fantastic. The crispness on the outside of the bagel, the chewiness, the softness in the middle, and then all the beautiful flavors from the everything seasoning, not the everyday. And then that salty, crunchy bacon with the nice mellow lettuce, and then that creamy cream cheese. Oh my God. It's, it's a delight, it really is. And it's great with these bagels, you can have them for breakfast, lunch, even for dinner if you really wanted to. But the one thing you do have there is the textures and the freshness that you're not really going to get as high in a supermarket. So I've got to try the salmon as well with the capers. Oh, losing all my capers now. So let's have a little, little try of this. Mmm. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, the smokiness and the richness from the salmon and a little bit of tang from the capers itself, bagel, the crust, the textures, the soft, it's just, yeah. And enough is said, it really is. You've really got to give this a go to see for yourself how good this really is. And I think that pretty much wraps up this week's episode with those beautiful and delightful bagels. It's just an absolute treat. If you want to give this a go, feel free to check out the list of ingredients below in the description box, as always, and uh, feel free to post comments and I love to see your results. In addition, if you want to like the video and subscribe to the channel, always appreciated. You can also catch me cooking live on Twitch, Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time till whenever we finish. So feel free to come and pop along. Link is in the description box below. But until next Friday, folks, stay safe, awesome, and amazing. Thank you.